Hello. Today I want to show you the latest cool actions, coolest actions uh, for adaptive cards integration or maybe for power automate integration with Teams when we are speaking about the adaptive cards. Now what I'm going about to what what I'm about to show you is not yet available um, publicly, it's just in the preview. So to access the features, um, I'm, I'll, just, I'll just showcase, um, you have to have a preview environment in Power Automate. So having that said, I will show you the new two actions that simply allows you to post your own custom adaptive card to Microsoft Teams and then wait for the response. So unfortunately, you're not able to just send an adaptive card to Microsoft Teams and then record the response from that adaptive card in other Power Automate or in other uh, application that will be called out, out of this uh, adaptive card. However, that is really awesome so far. So the scenario I want to show you is like a part of an onboarding process. So imagine a new user is being hired. Manager is sending information to HR. Now HR is registering the user in their database and they're generating uh, them their employee ID or sub ID. And then they trigger a process that is sent to IT department for the IT to register the new user, to create them account, to create them domain account, a login password, and to create their email um, grant their uh, access to the telephone number or the device and to prepare and deliver uh, the user their new laptop. And so IT is then requested to put back some information they uh, uh, create once they register the new user. So their domain, their, their domain name, uh, their email address, their phone number, and their uh, laptop device ID. And so if we would like to create the same process using the simple Power Automate approvals, then obviously you would be able to assign a task to the uh, IT department people, but then you would request them as well to go to another location, uh, like a Power App or a SharePoint list, where they would be able to simply put in that additional information and then go back to the task to confirm they completed their task. So that's a bit of struggle, a bit of war because they need to leave one system to enter another system. Now with adaptive cards in this scenario, you simply can send them a form to their channel in Microsoft Teams. And so that a user there is able to fill in that form and that will automatically complete the task and also provide the additional information HR is requesting. So this is just the flow that is being triggered by the HR. So like imagine this is not being triggered manually, but this is uh, like being triggered via the Power App application or maybe simply by, by a SharePoint list form. Anyway, once HR is creating new record, they have to provide this information for the new employee. And that creates simply this record in SharePoint. And then what we expect is that ID will give us login, email, phone number, and computer number back. All right, so now let me show you these cool new features. First, what you have to do obviously is go to add action and then under teams and adaptive cards, sorry, You will notice that there are two new actions. First one is called post an adaptive card to a Teams user and wait for the response. And second one to the channel and wait for the response. Now, they are very simple, uh, they're very similar. So in our scenario, I'll just choose this one so that any user in a channel can respond. So note this action here is waiting for three parameters. First one is obviously a team, the second one is channel. And the third one is the message content in JSON. So uh, themes for test, cards test, and now the message. What you may 
seen already on Twitter or in my blog post is that sometimes here, instead of this open text field for a message, there is a button, open editor. That is an experimental feature. So um, let me show you how it works. I'll just save it. So if you want to have this action within an, an editor building, you need to go to the flow uh, Power Automate settings and turn on this experimental features option. What this will do, what this will do it will tell, turn on all the features that are still being under development, that are still somehow unstable, but you can preview them. So for example, one of these experimental features is the adaptive card editor. Here I'm able to provide the messages and keys. These are the variables. These are the variables that later on you would be able to use. Hmm. Oh, something's not working. Let me just refresh it again. Uh, that's that's the reason of the experiment. I mean, that's the pain of the experimental features. They are often just not working. So yeah, I mean, there is an issue. Possibly there is something going on right now. But anyway, in this editor, you would be able to design the card as you were able to do it at adaptivecards.io slash designer. And then having these variables here and values defined, you would be able to pass in data to use as a variables. Again, using this templating service. So the new feature that is also coming up in adaptive cards. However, it is not working yet, so I'll just switch back to, um, to not experimental features. And as that being reloaded, I'll just jump over to adaptivecards.io slash designer, where I already have my new fancy adaptive card uh, design. So this is the adaptive card that is going to be posted to channel. So then the user is requested to fill in uh, specific fields. Today, there is no yet um, validation present in adaptive cards. There is no yet requirement possibly to be set. But anyway, I'll just copy it and paste it back here. What I now want to do is to replace some values with actual values provided by the IT. So I'll replace the name with, with the first name. I'll change the value to to last name. Uh, that's, so that's one of the pains we have even today when trying to design adaptive card with dynamic values inside the action. This is just not always working at the position. And lastly, employee ID, right? All right. So now I have this adaptive card recorded. Now, what is also important for you to note out, it's, it is really, really extremely important, <clears throat> is that once you design a form in adaptive card, every field has this ID defined. This ID is then going to be uh, a key of the parameter returned by an adaptive card response 
that you'll be later able to use in your further actions. So um, define it wisely <clears throat> so that you don't confuse it with any other uh, name that you have in your uh, in your flow uh, so that it will be easier then for you to, to work with that. All right, so now the adaptive card is being configured. And next, there are like two configurations that allow me to say, That's a confirmation confirmation message that you can just post instead of the adaptive card. So it will replace adaptive card, uh, the form that is going to be sent in case it is set to yes. Unfortunately, this update message does not allow you to use any of the values that user inputs in the form in adaptive card. However, you can freely use any other uh, variable from previous actions. Uh, up to you. All right, so let's make it the first run. I'll just show you something. All right, consultant. Okay, and go. So now the flow has already been started and you can see the action that posted an adaptive cartridge channel is waiting for the response. And as you can see, there is this adaptive card already posted. So now I can just send back the data. Now, once I hit confirm, you'll notice that this card, this, this form is going to be replaced with this, with this message that I've defined. So it has been completed. The action stopped waiting. And now in its response body and in outputs, you can note that there is this data being returned, right? So that's the data we were actually waiting for. So what I need to do now is to use this data in the next action. Unfortunately, unfortunately, at this point, you cannot use the output data from this card, from this action in your next action. So you just have to construct it on your own, right? So you have just to like type in the name of the action and then the path to the property you want to take up. So the body data is user login. You can obviously use the purse JSON action as well, but that's just simple. So login mail. I have no idea why it always say that my expression is invalid, although it is. Okay, so now we have the outputs from the message from the adaptive card bond to the update item action. So whatever the user types in in the form in Teams is going to be used to update the record of the employee. So let's save it <clears throat> and test again. I'll use the same data, the same input data. All right, so there is a new form already.
that's a problem with the double entry. So like I can now easily type in any value site I want because there is yet no validation as set, but that is on the roadmap. Okay, and confirm. Thank you for action. Update item has been done successfully. And you can note that it actually used the values that I've typed in in the card. And obviously, <clears throat> yeah, and the second record that was created contains the information provided by the HR. So that was the second example. I mean, that was a working example. Right now, just for the short run, I want to show you the second action. That is called um, post an epic card to a user and wait for the response. It's really, really the same. The only difference is that there is this, this alert uh, setting and a summary. I actually didn't see that it's working. So I, I've set the summary and it's alert both. And I've seen nowhere any sign of, of the impact of these two settings. Nevertheless, uh, the configuration is just the same. But this, I mean, apart from or um, besides providing the team name and channel name, you have to actually provide an email of the user who is going to receive the, the card. So that's that's simple. All right, so um, having that said, I will just simply uh, simply finish this, uh, this small screencast. And I really hope that you'll find these new functions, these new actions, uh, very, very useful. I personally see a lot of scenarios, a lot of gaps that uh, currently in process, in business processes we had because we were not able to simply push this business process to the teams and then uh, keep the users inside the HR workplace. So not to force them to move away from teams, to allow them to really have the whole processes inside there. So to trigger the process in teams, to respond for, uh, for tasks in teams, and to make all these interaction inside the teams, what is very much more consistent for them and then easier in adoption than asking users to simply navigate away from teams to go to uh, approval task, then maybe to go to SharePoint then go elsewhere. So having these adaptive cards ability to be sent to the team's channel and team's users, and then to receive the, the feedback, the, the information from these cards is a real game changer. And I see a lot of scenarios where you can really benefit from having them. And I just can't wait for them to arrive in our public, in our productive environments that we can be really um, benefiting from having them. So, um, yeah, thank you very much. If you'd like to read a blog post about this, uh, about this new action, simply click the link below, below in, in the description. And if you have any questions, find me on my Twitter on contact via the, the contact form for, on my blog. Thank you. Thank you very much.